My son, Aidan, 23, moved back with us upon graduating college, as my husband wanted. My husband's original plan was to have Aidan live with us for free, but stay home and help with his disabled young brother, teen. However, Aidan started complaining about needing money and wanted to find a job. My husband was against this and even offered to double his allowance, but Aidan was growing tired of staying at home. So he began looking for jobs here and there for over a year, but none of his job applications came through. So he just apply and they have yet to get back to him. We were confused by this till recently. I found out that my husband was behind all the job applications being cancelled. He waited till Aidan applied and then he proceeded to cancel the application by impersonating him and using his email. I blew up at him for this but his justification is that he's just trying to make sure that our younger son is cared for by Aidan and said that Aidan has been a big help and that getting a job will affect his care for his brother. I went ahead and rented an apartment for Aiden and told him to stay there till he finds a job and starts paying for it himself. Aiden was hurt upon knowing what his dad did. My husband was livid when he found out. He called me unhinged and said I was separating the boys and teaching Aiden to become selfish and care more about a job than family. He also said it was a huge decision for me to rent an apartment without even running it with him. He's been giving me a hard time and calling me a terrible mother for encouraging Aiden to be selfish and self-centered. He said I needed to see and understand why he did what he did. Am I the idiot? I might be the one making this decision and spending money without my husband's approval. Edit. My husband says that since he and I have health issues, then we could use Aiden's help. When I suggested outside help, my husband refused, saying he won't ask anything of anybody and that his son was his problem and nobody else's. I used money from our joint account to pay for the rental apartment. My husband said it was wrong and a major waste of money since we consistently deal with medical bills. Not the idiot. Wow, hubby says his son is his own problem but is forcing it on Aiden. Dad is teaching him that he doesn't have a life besides taking care of his brother. Your husband is abusive to Aiden and honestly, creepy in his manipulations and insistence on Aiden being Dobby the house elf. Good thing you got Aiden out of there. At least he has one parent. I also don't understand what the long-term goal is here. What happens when the parents pass away or move into hospice care themselves? What if his brother ends up needing expensive professional care? Is Aiden supposed to just hope the government will support him? Or will a 30-plus year old with no job history magically get a high-paying job with great insurance to cover his and his brother's needs? Even with the tight job market, no one will take a chance on an adult with no job history, no sign of self-sufficiency and no upkeep in skills. It would be challenging to start working life as a very mature adult. Not only is this abusive, but it's almost criminally stupid in how short-sighted it is. Stand your ground. Your husband either doesn't understand he's destroying both his son's lives or he just doesn't care. Can you imagine all the bridges that have been burned by this man? This 23-year-old cannot go apply at any of these jobs he's already applied to ever again. What does he tell them? My family is so full of drama and psychotic that my dad was the one who quit the application process for me. And imagine this guy's self-esteem when he's applied everywhere and nobody even calls him when everyone is hiring. He was probably wondering what's wrong with him and it wasn't even him. Yeah, it actually is criminal to access someone else's email, especially if you're going to do things that hurt them with it. A 23-year-old cannot exist on allowance, and he's not a de facto caretaker. Your husband seems unhinged and crazy. It's not Aiden's responsibility to care for his disabled brother at the expense of his own life. You did the right thing for your son. Do whatever you need to do in order to protect your son, and don't let your husband exploit and parentify him any further. My husband got our former friend pregnant while we were separated, so he has an infant daughter. He doesn't plan to be involved in her life, but he's currently working with a lawyer to establish paternity because I'm forcing him to do it. The girl's mother has asked me if I want to meet her and introduce our toddler son to his little sister, but I've said no. My husband's family on his mother's side has been very accepting of the baby and her mother, so they've been pressuring me to meet her since she's technically my stepdaughter and they think I need to be willing to help foster a relationship between her and my son, as we all know my husband isn't going to do it. I was upset, so I told them my son would never have a relationship with her and I wouldn't ever meet her because they kept pressuring me to. Now everybody thinks I'm some awful witch who hates a baby when I don't. It also doesn't help that my husband has cut off financial help to that side of his family because they made me cry, which has only made them hate me more. 
We had a good relationship before all of this, so I feel like crap and I'm wondering if I'm an idiot. Not the idiot. Sounds like you're getting blamed for many of your husband's poor choices. I feel for the baby, but that's not your responsibility. The baby is your son's half-sister, not your daughter or anything. You owe nothing to no one. Let your husband deal with it and get some therapy to help you establish and keep boundaries for both of your sakes. You don't have to accept your husband's side, kid. I think your son would like to have a relationship with his half-sister in the future, but it should be solely your husband's responsibility to make sure that the kids spend time together, not yours. I'm honestly shocked that you gave him another chance, but with another chance comes the fact that he has another kid. Opie's husband isn't the only one making poor decisions here. Even if we ignore that Opie's husband raw-dogged her friend, got her pregnant, and tried to keep the pregnancy from her, Opie is still the idiot. Opie took her husband back but ditched the friend. She should have put them both in separate trash bins. Opie expects her husband to be a father to her son while being totally okay with her husband abandoning another baby. Then Opie explicitly stated that she wouldn't allow her son to have a relationship with his own sister. What is Opie going to tell her son when he grows up and finds out what she and her husband tried to hide a whole sibling from him? How can she trust her husband to be a good and responsible father to her child when he can so easily abandon another? How can she even love or respect a man who would leave his own child? Opie is the worst kind of hypocrite. Agreed. Everyone's the idiot here. Opie doesn't have to accept her husband's side kid. But Opie needs to accept that her husband has another kid and that her son has a sibling. That baby exists whether Opie wants to acknowledge it or not. And that baby is going to be a part of her extended family, especially given that her in-laws are accepting of the baby. Opie is trying to act like the baby is some minor inconvenience that she can just ignore. Opie, her husband and her so-called friend are all trash. Opie, both you and your husband are horrible human beings and I hope your son grows up to be a better person than both of you. Though, with his parents, your poor son doesn't stand a chance. I, female 18, live at home with my parents and attend community college so I can save up to transfer. My big sister, 21, also lives at home but goes to a real college nearby, her words. I've been looking for a part-time job and asked my sister if the restaurant she waitresses at has any openings. She said, maybe, but that was a few weeks ago and I never followed up. Cut to the issue. She came to my room last week and asked if I wanted to get lunch with her, and I said, sure. I assume we just go through the drive through so I wore fuzzy slippers, the outdoor kind, sweatpants and a high school t-shirt, and my hair was kind of dirty in a bun. I wasn't expecting to see anyone, we've only ever gotten fast food together, we only eat at sit-down places with our parents. We pulled up to her restaurant, and I told her I really wasn't dressed for that, so could we eat somewhere else? She said to not worry about it, and we went in. She immediately went to say hi to her friend at the hostess stand and left me with her manager. I thought it was weird that the manager was standing in the front until she told me I was there for an interview. Apparently, my sister did get me an interview but thought it would be hilarious to embarrass me in front of her co-workers by catching me off guard. I was so shaken that I immediately said, sorry, I wasn't expecting this, turned around and just left. At the time, my sister died laughing and didn't say much, but apparently she's now facing the consequences at work because her manager's really upset at having her time wasted and thought what my sister did was unprofessional and not funny. I don't think she'll get fired, but she had her hours reduced and a formal write-up. Now my sister's blaming me for making her look bad by not going through with the interview. Her friends have called me mean names, making me feel horrible, but I'm so torn. I haven't told my parents yet, but I'm really embarrassed and I don't want to get into trouble. My friends are split between thinking I should have tried to be strong and finish the interview, but others are supportive of my decision. I don't know anymore, I'm just really confused. Not the idiot. Your sister attempted to humiliate you for a laugh and her boss reacted predictably to her terrible unprofessional behaviour. Actions meet consequences. Agreed. As a manager, even if OP hadn't left, I would have been upset that Sis brought someone to me unprepared and looking like a mess. No matter what OP did, Sis would look bad in the boss's eyes. She only made it worse by confirming it was intentional with the laughter. That, for me, would take it from a write-up straight to firing her. If anything, the boss is too forgiving by only cutting hours. OP, your sister is 21 years old and got a thrill out of trying to humiliate you at her workplace. 
She seems like a very mean and petty person, and to me also pathetic, but dangerous enough to not want to be anywhere near her. I hope she has some redeeming qualities. I don't think you need to worry about whether you should have stayed or not. You did what you had to do, and it was in your right. Your sister's behavior, though, is unacceptable, and having consequences is only fair. Yeah, you didn't get the referrer in trouble. She got herself in trouble. She's trying to victimize herself so she doesn't have to acknowledge she was a crappy human being. She was just cruel and malicious. i definitely inform your parents about it. Even if they can't do anything about it since you're both adults, letting her get away with her bad behavior by hiding it from them will never help her and will only enable her behavior. I, 19 male, smoke all day every day. It's just a normal part of my routine and I don't see anything wrong with it. And this is not something that I want to be judged on. My mom is completely against me smoking herbs and she's always telling me to stop. I believe that it's nature's medicine and that society oppresses those who use it. It's helped me in so many ways and it upsets me that it's still stigmatized. My mom told me a few days ago that my uncle and younger cousins, a preschooler and a young child, would be over around 3 p.m. yesterday and asked me not to smoke that day. She always gets upset if she sees me smoking, so I didn't do it while she was home. She went to the grocery store in the morning and I figured it would be okay to blaze up in mom's living room with the windows open before my cousin showed up. Well, as it turns out, my uncle and two cousins showed up early and walked in as I was smoking a joint and lounging on the couch in my underwear. It was a really embarrassing moment and I'm sure my small cousins were shocked to see me like that. To make matters worse, they saw me coughing in a haze of smoke as they walked in. My uncle was upset and he screamed at me for smoking in front of the children and being irresponsible. He told me that I needed to grow up and start thinking about the consequences of my actions. I could tell he was really disappointed in me and the whole situation frustrated me. I know this was not a good situation and I regret that my cousins had to see me like that, but here's the thing, I don't think I did anything wrong. My mom told me the wrong arrival time, so how was I supposed to know that my cousins would be coming over early? And I don't see the big deal about smoking in my own home as long as I'm not bothering anyone. This would have been avoided if I had been told the correct time. Regardless of your way of life, your cousins are children and should not be around smoke. Your mom made it clear and asked me not to smoke on that day. You smoked. You got busted. You're the idiot. And you need to grow up not because you smoke, but because you smoke all day every day and don't take responsibility for yourself or your actions. Exactly, it's not only that she didn't want the kiddos to see you smoke, no one wants kids to have to breathe in smoke for their health. Also, anything you do all day every day is a problem. That's the definition of an addict. I don't care if you're doing pot or jogging, moderation is important. You obviously couldn't even control your habit for one day. That's a really big deal. OP also seemingly lives with his mom and doesn't even have the decency to put on some clothes and smoke outside. Oh, and it's nature's medicine. If you need to take medicine all day every day, you are severely ill. If you don't need medicine all day, every day, but take it nonetheless all day, every day, you're an addict. Grow up, OP, and stop being so horrible to your mum. She's also affected by the passive smoking all day every day. She's probably walking around high all day not realizing it. I want to throttle you, OP, for the absolute disrespect. My son passed away unexpectedly. It's been hard. Out of my three children, he was the one who remained close to me in adulthood. I have no problem with my other two children. They just never really reach out anymore. My son left behind two dogs. I don't have the energy to care for two dogs. So, I decided to keep the older one because it requires less care. My co-worker has a soft spot for animals. She's young and can walk the puppy and give him the care he needs to live a happy life. I dropped the puppy off at her house on Tuesday. This was a nice decision because this co-worker is trustworthy and I can still arrange puppy playdates when I have the time. It's not like the dog will never be seen again by this family. Well, when my son's girlfriend learned that I rehomed the dog, she was angry. She told me my son would never approve of this. She told me that she was like a mother to the dog and that it would be lost without her. She used harsh words and told me that I should have offered the dog to her first. My son's girlfriend has been a mess since his passing and I thought adding a puppy to the mix would just push her over the edge. Edit, my son lived with me so it's not like she was living with the dogs and I snatched them up. They rarely spent time at my house together. I was with the dogs every day and more involved in their lives. 
I didn't do it randomly, it was being discussed. I guess she didn't take me seriously. Not the idiot. If the dogs lived with you, then they were yours before your son's girlfriends. It's up to you to know what to do with the dogs, and if you estimated that the puppy would be better off with your colleagues, then you're right. A girlfriend is a girlfriend. They weren't married and didn't live together, which makes her a stranger to you. I wouldn't leave my deceased son's dog to a stranger either. You are the idiot. So this poor girl loses the person she loved and their dog? Yeah, I'd be furious. Explain to your co-worker and ask for the dog back to give to the girlfriend. You made assumptions about what this woman needed instead of just asking her. She already had a bond with the dog and you don't just get to decide what's too much for her. My goodness, you judged her for grieving, calling her a mess. Of course she's a mess, her partner died. It was very inconsiderate on your part. I imagine she feels like she lost part of him again. You should apologize and offer to give her the dog. It will be awkward telling your colleague, but even a fairly normal person will understand.